And this gospel today is a warning to us. Who is clean? Even when we arrive at Holy Thursday nights, after three and a half years with Christ, after seeing so many miracles, after all the wonders of the life of Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ says to them, you are clean, but not all. There's something about the human condition, something about our pride, something about our weakness, something about our too looking to the ways of the flesh, but no matter how much Christ gives us, no matter how close he brings us to him, like those 12 apostles, no matter how many miracles, how many gifts, how many wonders, how many times he forgives us, there will never be a time in which all are clean. Is it true that in this little chapel, this little place right here, all of us are clean? Is it true that right now, every one of us is pleasing to God and will end up in the kingdom of heaven? And our Lord Jesus Christ says, you are clean, but not all. And that was in the most sacred moment of the ordination of his priests. The most sacred moment of the giving out of the very first Holy Communion. The most sacred moment when he spoke his most beautiful words that would ever speak to all his apostles. When they would say to him, Behold, now thou speakest plainly. Behold, now we believe that thou art the Son of God. And that night, one of them will be burning in hell. And the others would deny him as cowards, though they would return and be go to heaven. But one of them will be burning in hell. And it is a mystery of life. That even though God gives us everything, and we know that he gives us everything, we still do not turn our eyes away from the vision of the world. Ten lepers said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Please have mercy on us. Why did they want mercy? Why did they want mercy? And it's just like on the cross. Both the good thief and the bad wanted mercy. Both of them wanted to be taken down from the cross. Both of them wanted to be, be brought back into a normal life. But what was the difference? That the one who was on the left wanted to go back to be healthy again so that he could return to his sin. St. Ambrose says this in his sermon on the death of Valentinian, that we mentioned many times. He says, why do you not sin like you used to in your old age? Why are you not wicked like when you were young? You think it's because you have overcome your sins. You think it's because you've gotten better. You think it's because you've been cleansed. It's not. It's because it doesn't work anymore. It's because your back is broken. It's because you can't hear. It's because you can't speak. It's because no one listens to an old man. But if your health was given back to you, you would instantaneously return to your wicked life because it has not gone out of your hearts. And do not think that because you are old and you cannot sin like you used to, because the fire of the passions has gone out, that thereby you are pure, thereby you have overcome anger, thereby you have overcome the sins of the youth. You have not. They are still deep in your hearts. And as soon as God gave you your health back and all its perfection, you would immediately, at that precise moment, return to sin. And God knows what's inside the heart. Therefore, judge not by what you see. The ten lepers were walking down the street. What happened? We were on the side of the road. And the great prophet Jesus Christ came by. And we, we saw him come by. And we, we said, Lord Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he blessed us. And all of our leprosy was cleansed. That's really great. And all ten would have looked the same. But one disappeared. And the other nine went about their business. And they forgot what their purpose was. And our Lord Jesus Christ reminds us of our purpose. It's the principle and foundation of the Ignatian retreat. And the principle and foundation of our lives. Man is made to praise, reverence, and serve God our Lord, and by this means to save his soul. What are we made for? What is my mind made for? It's made to know God. What is my heart made for? It's made to love God. What is my body made for? It's made to serve God. And we want to have sin taken away because you know that sin has many negative effects. The easiest example is alcoholism. Alcoholism is a terrible sin. It offends God. And it, but what else does it do? It causes problems in our liver. It causes problems in our relationships. 
It causes problems in our passions. It causes problems in all of our health. It makes us feel terrible spiritually. It makes us feel terrible psychologically. It makes us feel terrible physically. And the more we drink, the more we're separated, the more discouraged and depressed we become. And we want to overcome alcoholism. We want to overcome the sin of alcoholism, the sin of drunkenness. And so we go to our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, take away my drunkenness. And suppose that he takes it away completely. Then what? We're happy because our stomach feels better. Our liver feels better. Our friends have returned. Our health has returned. And with most of these drunkards who are now clean for 7,837 days, with most of them, God is not well pleased. Because they're happy now that their stomach is better, but they're not happy that they are, they are made right with God. They are, as St. Alphonsus says, the confession of a sick man is sick. Many a man goes to confession when he's dying. Many a man asks to be cleansed when he's dying. Many a man wants to return to God when he's dying. But scarcely one in 100,000 makes a valid confession. That's what St. Alphonsus says. Scarcely one in 100,000. Maybe one in 100,000. That's his optimistic view. And why? Because he's sorry because of the sickness. He's sorry because of how he feels. Because you see, you've learned by Alcoholics Anonymous, for instance, that alcoholism is a disease. We used to know that it was a sin that offends God. And when you offend God, it's bad for your health. Because God made our minds to know Him. And when we use it for something else, it destroys our minds. And I made our wills to love Him. And we use it for something else, it destroys our wills. He made our bodies to serve Him. And when we use it for something else, it destroys our bodies. <coughs> well, you remember when you're a carpenter, and you're a mechanic. You remember when I was in the, entered the seminary, we put in the mechanic shop, and Father Leaf was, I had all his tools. And he said, your first duty is to take care of the tools. You mess up my tools, I kill you. <laughs> You, if any tool is not cleaned after it's used, if it's not put back in the exact spot, you can use your fingers to take wrenches off and to take bolts off. You're not touching my stuff. We've got to take care of the tools in order to be able to keep working. And if we take the tools and use them for something they're not supposed to be used for, what happens? The tools become ruined, and we can't use them anymore. And God gave us our body and our passions as tools. And what are they for? Glorifying God. Now, ten lepers were cleansed. Everybody goes to confession. Everybody gets the grace of God. Everybody gets baptized. But only one returns. And what does our Lord Jesus Christ say? <coughs> were not the ten made clean? Where are the nine? Has no one been found to return and give glory to God except this stranger, this Samaritan, Arise and go thy way, for thy faith has saved thee. The faith was given to all ten. The faith did not save all ten. The faith was given to all twelve of those spies. The faith did not save all twelve. And so it happens that as we travel through life, God gives us all blessings. He gives us all air to breathe. He gives us all the grace of salvation. And many accept part of it, but why do they accept it? Just like many people who turn away from drunkenness, and on the day of their judgment, they will say, Lord, I stopped drinking now for 13 years, 7 months, 9 days, and 6 hours. Depart from me, accursed and everlasting fire. That is what they're going to see. God doesn't want you to take a bath so that you can feel clean. God doesn't want you to take away drunkenness so that you can not be a drunk. He doesn't want to take away impurity so that you can not be impure. He doesn't want to take away heresy so that you can not be a heretic. And the same with all other sins. <coughs> he doesn't want to take them away so that you can not have that sin. And that is why he gave the parable and the warning that there was a man who was possessed by the devil. And the devil was driven out of the man. And what happened? He left his house clean and empty. We are in an age of emptiness. And emptiness is so much a part of our life. 
That even when we become clean, we remain empty. We remain shallow. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that we were made to praise Him, to glorify Him. And it has to be done by our own free will. So ten lepers were made clean. Go show yourself to the priest. And so they did. And afterwards, they remembered in the same way that we remember after St. Anthony finds our keys. Before our keys are, when our keys are lost, we have a great devotion to Anthony. When our keys are found, we don't even know he's a saint. We forget everything. But somehow, when we receive the gift of God, <laughs> which is the Holy Roman faith, what do we do? We must return to God and give thanks. And we must give glory to God. And we must recognize that the faith is a gift of God, which we cannot earn. We think we are prudent, and maybe we are. But with this prudence, we may be damned. We think we are just, and maybe we are. But if this justice is natural, we will be damned. And so which justice do we have? As St. Thomas says, are you just or are you just? Are you prudent or are you prudent? We have the prudence of the flesh. We have the justice of the flesh. We all know about justice. We all know about it. I'm the one that built that church. I'm the one that helped in this church. I'm the one that gave you uh, your start in life to where you got a job and you're able to support your family. I'm the one, and you owe it to me to give a return. You owe it to me to keep everything the way I want it to be. When the fact is, everything is a gift of God and we owe nothing to you. And nothing is owed to, your, owed to yourself. Everything is owed to God. And we don't know this anymore. <clears throat>